just talk, talking about two different outlooks completely, science and music. You are saying also in terms of your family, your yeah. father being a physicist and your mother and being a musician. A musician. Yeah. So you have been seeing that two, how, how did they reconcile that two different worlds? Um, well, again, my father was a, uh, was a research scientist, but he was deeply interested in music. He was also a music student. Oh. And uh, um, I wouldn't say, say the same thing with my mother, because she never did any science, yeah. but she was a very strict disciplinarian, and she made sure that I internalize the music. She was my... I must call her my guru, my mentor and my guide. Even now she guides my way. And uh, 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 I trust her immensely for her uh, ethics and for, uh, I'm sorry, not ethics, for, for her aesthetics hmm. and for her, uh, uh, you know, uh, beauty, ideas of beauty. Yeah. And I believe without any doubt what she tells me to be beautiful, to be beautiful. Yeah, yeah so uh, I think um, I, even this quality of having utmost faith in anybody, I think it was instilled by my parents. Yeah. So um, the two of them, my mother and my father, they always complimented each other in the sense that nobody, my father always, uh, he never had any say in my music training when I was training under my mother. He never tried to impose his ideas or his, although he was a music student and although um, he understood many of the um, fundamentals and many of the grammatical aspects of music, yeah. but he never interfered in my music training when I was training under my mother. Yeah. How many brothers and sisters were you? I have a brother, one brother. Did he take up music as no, well? No, he's, uh, he's a doctor, medical doctor by profession. Oh. And he is currently in London. Oh. But, and he is also interested in music. And yes, he is. We were trained as children. Yeah. We were trained. And he has trained in Sarod, the oh, instrument. Okay. Huh. And uh, um, he knows a little bit of tabla and a uh, little bit of, you know, vocal, of course, because his yeah. mother and his sister were there at home. He understands music very well. Yeah. He's very, very musical. I would say he is even more musical than I am. Yeah. And had he taken to music, he would have been a fabulous musician, I'm sure. Yeah. But he did not take up music because he took up medicine. Yeah. And um, yeah. that's, that's it. He Even as a medical doctor, hmm. he is into medical research again. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> and does he play music in his as a, a hobby? I he don't is. really know. <laughs> Okay. Because it's very difficult, uh, uh, it is very difficult for him, a lifestyle that he leads, uh, of yeah. a busy doctor, of a yeah. successful doctor in the city of London. With my guru has been, uh, has its advantages and its disadvantages, both from the point of me being my, mother, my guru's daughter, yeah. you know, because I feel that uh, advantages in the sense that uh, I had the advantage of having the Guru around any time I sat for practice, yeah. any time of the day. Yeah. Secondly, advantages in terms of the freedom, the, liber uh, the liberty to yeah. ask anything to my Guru anytime, yeah. you know, to raise any query, to uh, prod into any stupid thing, which hmm. had she not been my mother, I would have thought a hundred times before asking, to a, asking to a teacher and uh, the disadvantage is being that because I was her daughter she was like I she wouldn't let go of me she would I mean um, she would as I told you she was a very strict disciplinarian mm -hmm. and she would say nothing doing you mm -hmm. if you are sleepy go wash your face come back again I don't want you to sit in front of me and yawn you know, that kind of a discipline, which she would not have been able to do had I not been her being, daughter. Being her daughter. Yeah. Yeah. Did you pass through a teenage rebellion phase? Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. 
you, I was reading your interview where you were talking about preparation for uh, All India Radio, some what music contest, which yes. changed the way you looked yes. at music. Yes. Yeah. That Can is you? the point when I started learning from my mother. That is the point. Yes. That mm. was very accidental. Mm. Since she was there at home and she was available all the time, I never paid any attention. I mean, she also never paid any attention to my music uh, learning, really, mm-hmm. education. Because there was Pandit Narendra Data who was coming home and who was teaching practically everybody from my grandmother at home. Mm-hmm. But this particular instance, I, like, I was unable to um, present myself for the competition because of the sickness, because of the mm-hmm. illness. I was down with typhoid mm-hmm. and it got relapsed. So I was really, really weak. And I said, I cannot, I cannot, I cannot appear for the competition. Mm. And at this point of time, my mother said, what's wrong with you? I will see how you cannot. Mm. And she took the reins in her hand. She said, I'll teach you just, I'll prepare you just for the competition. Let's see. Mm. So she gave me that fighting spirit also. Never say no, never Mm. say die kind of a thing. And she prepared me for the competition. It was, I think, a month and a half training that I took with her yeah. daily, ri- rigorously, yeah. which changed the whole outlook. Because till then, I was learning from the point of view of giving exams. I was already a Sangeet Vishara at this point yeah. of time. Yeah. So I knew many ragas, I knew the grammar, I knew the you know the, the, the differences between the similar sounding ragas and I thought I was doing very well. I thought mm-hmm. I had a lot of knowledge yeah. of uh, music. But when I started with her, knowledge, I, I realized that I had the knowledge all right, but knowledge is just one aspect of art. Yeah. And like she opened to me the whole uh, possibility of that stylized gaiki. Mm-hmm. The, uh, the Jaipur Atravali stylized Gharanadar Gaiki hmm. that uh, portion in me it, that she was the one who instrumented to open that thing for me it was like Ali Baba's um, cove opening to me and uh, then the, the training that started for that preparation of the competition really lasted long until I had you know imbibed all the characteristics of the dharana and it was then it was very very strict and uh, disciplined Mm. teaching how is her relationship with your daughter she hasn't taught her at all no no (laughs) (laughs) well sometimes on and off yes my daughter says well my daughter is also very musical Mm. in the sense that she can um, uh, repeat some things that you tell her to repeat but uh, so in that uh, respect she goes and she sits with her grandmother mm. but not as uh, seriously or not as rigorously that a uh, music student would yeah I think also it's very difficult for children to see their parents or their grandparents as persons in you just see them as parents and it needs something else to see them differently. Well, with me and my mother, I think it so happened that she discovered the teacher in her when mm. she started teaching me. Because until then, as I told you, she was a disciple yeah. to her guru. And she started teaching me when she realized that she can teach really well in the sense that she has that teacher in her, the guru in her. And as I told you, after me, there are a, there is a series of students that she has trained and a very good quality of, of training of students. What kind of books you like to read? What kind of films you like? Don't not about music. You <laughs> must be having a life outside music <laughs> as well. Yeah, uh, books I like to read and I like to read uh, generally uh, biographical um, books and uh, I... I'm very slow in English reading, but I read uh, my uh, Marathi, Marathi literature yeah. um, to with with quite a lot of interest. Mm. 
I like to write also. Uh-huh. Apart from these things, yeah. I in fact I should have brought that thing. I have something with me. Uh, it's a scientific article, uh-huh. but uh, I have talked about music and science. Uh-huh. Music within science. Uh, sorry, science within music and science for music. Yeah. So. <laughs> Uh, it's 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 a it's a journal of Marathi Vidyan Parishad. Yeah. And uh, the the article is in Marathi, uh-huh. but I have spoken about the uh, scientific aspects of music in it. Not music therapy or something. No, no therapy. Oh, okay. I, you, have you read? There is a book where it's about arithmetic and music. Something. Are you? Do you mean something like that? No, but I have talked about shrutis. Oh. What is it that? Um, that makes Indian music different from yeah. the, you know, the rest of the world music yeah. is that is shrutis, hmm. the the swaras, the the um, levels of the yeah, the tones, no, no, not tones. Yeah. Um, you know, we have a shardja pancham samad. Yeah, something sa is to pa hmm. is to three is to two. I am sorry, I am sorry, 2 is to 3. Yeah. So the pa is a, a 3, 1.5 times what yeah. the sa is. Yeah. So if I maintain this shadja pancham samad, this is the ba- most basics of the basic of the samad. Yeah. But when I am doing in a rag, hmm. if I have say for example risha, yeah. and uh, its natural samad will be dhaivat, uh-huh. re to dha. Because it will, it is Shadja Panchama again. Yeah. So for certain ragas, mm-hmm. if that rishav is komal, mm-hmm. then that dhaivat will also have to be komal, komal. because it will have you to will be maintain samadhi. that one fifth. Yeah. yeah. And if that komal rishav, mm-hmm. like for example in a rag like Shri, mm-hmm. that komal rishav is slightly lower in shruti. Yeah. Then accordingly, the dhaivat will also have to be lower in shruti. Yeah. So maintaining this samvad is very diff- uh, very um, essential, and it is the the foundation of Indian music. Yeah. So I have spoken about that. this science. Yeah, it's in a way that's what mathematics is all. I have about. spoken about the science of the tanpura. Uh-huh. Why is tanpura such a integral and such an important part of not just vocal music, it uh-huh. is an essential part of all music, uh, um, Indian music, because it gives the, it gives a sur sagar. Yeah. I have spoken about the structure and the function of Tanpura. Tanpura, Tanpura is the only instrument I can play. <laughs> because when, as a child, I used, I don't know why I learned Tanpura. I don't know. Because we, I used to go with my sister. She was learning Kathak. That I sitting in the ma, in the master's room mm. because you just it's so easy to do. Mm. <laughs> but have you ever heard the Tanpura? Uh, only only listening to Tanpura. Maybe no, because I may pro- probably I take it too much for granted that it's not an important part. It's something just to give so and that's it. Mm. Mm. That I have spoken. Mm. So I like to write. I like to read. And I, I I generally like to read something that inspires me, which is basically biographies. Yeah. And you, the person you admire biography most? Any few leaders, political leaders? No. Mm. The one that I enjoyed the most was Marie Curie's biography, written by her daughter. Oh, okay. Who was the one of the daughters was a Nobel laureate again, yeah. but the other one, Eva, Eva uh-huh. Curie or Eve Curie, uh-huh. she has written a biography of her mother, uh-huh. which is not is, uh, originally in English, but I read the English translation. Oh, she must have written in French. I don't know. Yeah. But I read the English translation, but it's beautiful. That's yeah. beautiful. Then I love Charlie Chaplin's autobiography. Uh-huh. Oh. You know, I have never I have hardly ever read biographies. Then it's my passion to read the 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 same poets of yesteryears, you know. Yeah. Kabir, Sudha, Yeah. 
I, I have read Kabir more than anything else. And it's my passion to, you know, I keep books hmm. and I just bring out the book and read hmm. the song. Like hmm. I'm reading hmm. script or hmm. I'm reading prose. Uh-huh. And uh, sometimes some tune will come to me when I'm reading. Yeah. And every time I'm reading their works, hmm. every time I find new meaning in it, new direction in it. The first time I read Surdas was when I found a book called Sur Sagar, which has about 900 and odd songs written by him. And the first time I read it, I read it in one go, all 900 songs in three days. I was in a daze. I was in a different world. I was totally transported. (laughs) But then after that, my reading, slow reading started. Mm-hmm. And almost two years I kept reading Surdas mm-hmm. again and again and again. That's when I composed mm-hmm. some of his bhajans into tunes. Yeah. And only now, mm-hmm. I mean, my, my work is not yet complete. I have gone ahead and I have recorded Surdas. Oh. Oh. So I keep doing this for Surdas. Mm-hmm. I like to read Kabir. I like to read Meera. I like to read Tukaram. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It not just uh, it not just gives um, you know the philosophical side of the poet, yeah. but it also gives an idea of the life of the poet, what kind of life he must have led, mm-hmm. and uh, again that is very very inspiring to me. I 